Hi, this is Andy here, and I thought I'd do a very sort of quick and dirty video about um, how I use Obsidian for doing uh, DMing, DM prep. So uh, I use, um, I used to use, well, Markdown, just any kind of Markdown notes, and so I tend to try and write in, in plain text and Markdown. For those of you who don't know, Markdown is a, a kind of syntax with some simple tags that allows you to um, render then later on through a, some kind of Markdown processor. Uh, the the text the plain text file as a, a nice looking formatted HTML file, and then uh, based on Mike Shee's um, Shee's uh, Lazy Dungeon Master prep, I, I switched to Notion, and Notion is definitely a, a lovely app. Um, it has some really nice drag and drop features. It has some really nice kind of ways of working. It has this kind of nice database sort of functionality to it, um, and Mike has been using that quite a lot. I had a problem with Notion, which um, Notion doesn't work offline, and after after and, and also it exports really badly. So, you know, after thirty years of working in digital, um, I've learned to try and keep things in formats that are going to last forever, or at least a very long time, uh, rather than sitting in someone's platform. And um, so, one of the things was when Notion exports, it exports and it adds these um, as as Markdown files. It adds. Um, 32 characters plus a, a space, so 33 characters of just kind of gobbledygook unique ID numbers and letters um, to everything, every directory, every file and stuff. So that was a big pain. I had to use a, a renamer to kind of get all of my notes out and rename them all. Uh, but the worst thing was that when I was, uh, I'd been doing some notes and I'd been doing some, I was out and about and I'd been doing some notes, uh, I had my laptop with me and I wasn't online and I did some notes in Notion for a uh, some part of the uh, the session and uh, just before the session when I kind of opened up and I was getting everything ready uh, Notion then went online obviously and synced and it deleted the stuff that I had um, prepped now I did not eventually find it in the in the trash but in the middle of the session where I thought it was there I was like oh I can't find those notes and it was really irritating um, and so I kind of decided I'm going to switch back to plain text and then I discovered um, Obsidian. So Obsidian is, uh, there's a platform called Obsidian Portal, which is actually for DM Prep 2. Slightly annoying that they both have the same names. The thing I'm talking about is at obsidian.md, um, and it's an app, and it's a cross-platform app. Um, desktops, uh, they are coming up with a mobile version. They're in beta, I think, at the, mo at the moment. The point about it is, though, that... Um, it's all plain text anyway and all flat files anyway, so it kind of doesn't really matter where you do your editing of the notes. All that really matters is um, at the time it comes to actually doing your um, your DMing and some of the prep uh, that you can do it on your laptop and see it how you want. So what I'll do is I'll show you kind of where I, um, how I have my stuff set up. So um, I've, in this case, I'm in one of my um, sessions. I've got kind of my DM resources. I have some some default tabs. I have a sort of cheat sheet for Avray here, for example, as a markdown file. It's rendering here in preview as a um, uh, as rendered markdown actually, because I've got a plugin that does it. Um, but this is just plain text. You'll see it in a minute. Um, there's someone who uh, on, uh, put up the basic rules from the OGL uh, in in markdown files. Um, I've got sort of a few other default tabs and stuff like that of you know initiative trackers and, and rules and DM screens and stuff. Uh, German rules, I live in Germany. Um, and then, you know, for music, I've got Spotify playlists and those kinds of things, right? So that's that stuff. I have my session notes in here. Um, and if anyone is in my Tuesday night sessions or if anyone is doing uh, Wild Mount or Dangerous Designs, um, uh, there might be some spoilers in this. I should probably say this up front. So I have, uh, you know, my previous session notes uh, are all... Um, in here um, and I just date them and give them a kind of name and uh, and then you've got my this is my was my session this week I have an encounter tracker which I actually have in numbers you could have it in Excel it's just a spreadsheet and I have the um, I have the stat blocks there so that I can uh, quickly just use that I, I'm sort of keep flipping backwards and forwards between D&D &D Beyond's um, encounter tracker and something like this I sometimes use the one in Avre, so I play over Discord. Um, we use Albear Rodeo as the VTT for the maps, um, and that's it. I try and keep it as low-tech as possible. Um, so I have kind of adventures. I have images in here, some sort of random images. I have items. I'm starting to kind of change this. This is partly the way this got exported out of Notion. I have locations, uh, maps, monsters. Monsters are mostly just stat blocks that have clipped from content that you know I, I have access to and own on D&D um, Beyond. 
uh, as well as the tokens from them. And then my NPCs mostly, well, some of them that are um, out and about, so, you know, villains and stuff like that, they would probably live uh, in, in here. Uh, others, they will live in um, over up in um, the location, so I'm going to get to in a second. Uh, they've got my, my player characters. I have a bunch of kind of random encounters that are here as well, just in case, you know, just in case. And there's a few other bits and pieces there. Could probably tidy this up and tighten up that as a, as a kind of folder structure, but that's it. What I've realized sort of working this way over the last um, kind of few weeks is most of the time you're moving from, uh, or the, the party is moving, the pieces are moving from situation to situation. So some, And it's location based. So you're, they're moving from a place to a place to another place. And in those places are, are PCs. Um, uh, NPCs. So now in, in uh, I've got them in Hapaduk at the moment in Wildmount. So I have some handouts here. I have locations uh, here and in those there are sub locations in Hapaduk. Uh, they've just for example been to the lay of the land herbalist shop and there's a little uh, file in there about that. Um, and then I have the, the the PCs that are located in that and sort of really likely to always be in Hapaduk there and the same as a few other things. So that's what that looks like. It's all kind of flat files. Um, it's all just images, some PDFs. Sometimes there's sort of Excel files. Um, most of the time, it's just markdown files and images. So in um, Obsidian, uh, it looks the same, right? So in Obsidian, you've got um, it's like a file explorer on the left, and you're seeing exactly what you saw on my desktop just now. Um, and uh, so. If I go to session example here, you can see I've got one here and I can start writing and go, the, the, um, this is, is, is next week's session, week's session where, um, you know, whatever, All right? But I follow the, the lazy DM way more or less and um, you can set up templates. So I can insert a template into here that I already have. I've got a template folder down here um, and it just dumps that text in here. And so what you see here is um, Mike's um, session template, session planning template. Right? Now you're seeing this currently in its um, markdown form. Right? So if I go over to uh, preview here, um, you'll see it rendered. Okay, and I, there's, a, um, there's a keyboard shortcut. It's at Apple E that I've got it set up in Command E um, to, sit, uh, to go between the two. And what you see here is, um, so I'm going to have, uh, I'll just get rid of that. <clears throat> I might have some characters, so I might have, um, I don't know, there's a, there's a character called uh, Clef Tinkertop, for example. Now, markdown links, you normally write a markdown link for HTML, so if I wanted my website, so Andy Polane. Um, and uh, and then I put my my website uh, address in there. I've got uh, I've got a autocomplete on. There you see uh, when it's rendered, uh, and it goes. And if I click on that, it'll open my browser. Um, Obsidian allows you to do sort of wiki links, internal wiki links to um, uh, any other item in that you've got here. Um, so I've got in Hapaduke. Uh, I've got an NPC who's called Clef Tinkertop. Right? He's one of the so spoiler, but he's one of the. If, also, if you've seen Critical, of, it's still watching Critical Role in the early days. It's a spoiler for that too. So I might say, okay, here's my character um, uh, Clef Tinkertop, and um, so I instead do a double bracket like that, and I start writing Clef Tinkertop, and you see it come up there, a bit like Notion does, and I can auto complete there. So now, uh, when I click on that. Uh, it's going to go to Clef Tinkertop. I'll come back to that page in a second. All right. So I'm at a strong start. The, the PCs uh, arrive in Hapaduk, and I've got a, a location for Hapaduk uh, page, uh, and they go searching, f uh, and they are, let's say, they, they are met by Clef Tinkertop's um, daughter. Another um, spoiler alert. Um, and her name is Rissa Tinktop. Okay, uh, and then I have uh, the scenes here. I might have um, Tinkertop uh, Inventions Workshop. Um, secrets and clues. I don't. Know, let's say uh, Clef knows where the best cobalt dried dried cobalt uh, heads are to be found. That's not a spoiler. That's not really a thing. Um, so, 
I wanted to um, show you here in Markdown, it looks like just a dash and square brackets. When it's like this, when it's rendered, it's a checkbox. So if I click on that and I, well, if that, the players have been given that clue, I then know um, later on that I've done that. Okay, and you see all of this. So that would be my, my, my session notes. I'd start to do that. And so effectively, my kind of database, if you like, is just a bunch of flat files. And what I do is, if we go to Clef here, um, I have usually the, the, I name the folder with them. I have a little text file describing them. In this case, I've actually put his location, his his workshop there in inside his thing, just kind of for ease, so I didn't have to have a separate one. And then, um, you know, I might have a, a photo, uh, an image or something that I found. So in, in this case, I think I've used this rock tinkerer one, uh, rock gnome tinkerer. I think it's from um, Wizard of the Coast, actually. Um, you yeah, know, that I found online, Google Images. So. Um, what you'll see is when I click on that, it keeps going to that one. And I I'm using actually these um, keyboard shortcuts to navigate backwards and forwards like you would in a browser. Um, but actually what you can do is you can say, well, I actually want this open all the time. So I'm going to pin this one. OK, so then when I'm in kind of render mode, um, I when I click on Clef, he opens up, his page opens up in another window. And this one never closes. And it's really, really handy. Right? So I've got my main session here. And I'm basically just opening stuff um in in other windows over here uh, and you can hold down the buttons if i say i want to have his his daughter there i can have her open up and you'll see they open up in separate ones uh, and at some point you run out of screen space but you can drag and rearrange them so i can say okay well actually i've got rissa here and i've got clef here um, and when i set those both to preview mode um, they are i can kind of read through them and i can just quickly switch back and forth if i'm introducing a couple of characters in, in one go um, so that's pretty nice um, to make those things you can just uh, you can do double brackets again but with an exclamation mark for an image and again it starts it starts if I go rock gnome um, you know I've got uh, a few different versions here um, as a on, and I think there's some fan art of Clef Tinkertop um, there you go the PNG there so now um, you'll see this is if I get rid of this You'll see this is, uh, I think, some fan art from the Critical Role um, wiki. Um, and uh, so that's that's what you can do for images. Or you can decide, so they auto-completes as well, it's really nice. Or you can decide, oh, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to drag that in and it'll do the same thing. All right, so it's kind of drag and drop as well. Um, so that's how I kind of use that. I find it super useful. Um, I find it much, much quicker. I'm, I'm happy with the fact that everything is uh, plain text. It's saving all the time that I'm writing to. Uh, so I never, ever really lose any uh, data. Another nice feature is if I move any of this stuff around, the internal wiki links, uh, it, when I'm in Obsidian, when I move this stuff around, not when I'm on my desktop, the internal wiki links update. Right? So the, the, it's smart enough to know that if I've moved Tinkertop uh, Inventions Workshop somewhere else, um, uh, then it will update that uh, as well. Okay. Lastly, uh, what's quite nice about this is um, you get some added smarts to it. So in this session here, if I if I put, uh, well, I should put over here in in, in Hupperduke, I put a tag in called Hupperduke on any kind of those text files. I can have a look and I can go actually show me. Um, I want to have a look at, oh, so it's, uh, let's come out a preview of that. I want to have a look at um, all the tags to do with um, Hupperduke. So I've got a thing here where I might, uh, well, well, I'm looking for it now. Oh, here we go. So you've got this extra pane. A couple of things. You have a uh, tag pane, so you can look for everything that's to do with Hupperduke. And when I click on this tag, it'll find all the notes that have got a Hupperduke tags in it. I've only just started doing this, so there's not that many. Um, you can see the outline, uh, and if I'm in the session example, you'll see the outline. And if I click on that, it goes to any part in that. So I can just very quickly go there. Um, I've got backlinks. So let's go on to uh, Clef's file here. When I look at Clef's file, I can look at the um, the everywhere where he's mentioned. Right. So any of these uh, other notes where Clef is mentioned in those those wiki links, it will show me. Um, you know, and when I click on one of those, it will go there. Um, and then you can also look at uh, where this is linking out to. So this particular file is linking out to. So you can really get a really good sense of kind of how everything is connected together. Um, and it's a, a, just a really nice way of, of working.
you know, and if I wanted a monster, and I let's go into edit mode here, and I say, um, oh, I'm going to, I might have, I usually I do these on a separate, um, probably a separate note, but let's say here I want to have, um, you know, two times cobalt, um, and uh, so that are cobalt, cobalt. Um, I might just very quickly, if I think, oh, I just I, this is just going to be kind of random encounter, or it's going to be something going on. I might just uh, add the cobalt. Um, stat block somewhere there we are I've got it there might even say yeah let's just have a um, the cobalt token in there and um, so then now when I'm looking at that uh, let's close up to, I, I've got the stat block there I can have a quick look at it um, and just see all the stuff I need to know and, uh, and then I'm reminded okay and I can go and uh, have a look for the original file of that and um, open it in uh, System Explorer and you'll see then Oh, here's the couple of things ready to go into Discord. So it's um, it's for me, it's one of the best mixes between uh, plain text and um, something that's much smarter in in many respects, like Notion, and much slicker. But I know that this stuff's always going to be around. All this stuff lives on iCloud for me, so it's syncing all the time. Any of the text files I can edit on any device because they're just marked down plain text files, and um, and then I. Uh, when I'm actually running the game, I just easily kind of pull this up and I can move around and navigate around all my content uh, really nicely. And um, it all stays kind of intact. So there you are. I hope that's useful. Um, uh, yeah, that's a quick and dirty video of me using Obsidian for DMing. I should say, you know, I'm a novice DM. I'm kind of, I'm an experienced facilitator. But um, so this for, for me has been super, super helpful. Thanks very much.